the great thing that's going on here, take the students out, people are working away, and it's being sucked away. Um, but we're importing people as well. We're spending a lot of money educating people. And then these people leave. They leave the county and they leave the country. Mm. And they don't come back. But we're replacing them with unskilled people. But like you said, we don't know who they can Now, you're saying we're doing this to control migration. The recently signed UN Migration Pact gives control for migration to the United Nations. Are you going to make an active attempt to get that control back? Yes. And, and withdraw, the, withdraw from the pact? Yes, um, but I suppose we're into territory where people would, first thing to do is, on the, on the far left in politics would say that we're racist. Uh, we're far from that. Uh, the thing we want to do with our policy is very, very clear. Uh, we want to make sure that um, everyone in Ireland, everyone's a citizen of Ireland, is looked after, to the best of our ability. Uh, you touched on the brain drain, as we call it ourselves, we see with the nurses, which is a global issue, we see nurses being trained up and, and leaving the country. Um, and then we have a situation where we're, we're bringing in there'll be asylum seekers or there'll be refugees. Now, everybody has sympathy for re uh, asylum seekers and refugees, but not, not under the system that we have. And I'll give you a very, very quick example. I asked the, uh, of my own council lately to say to, uh, we received uh, something like 24 families of refugees. And I just said to the executive, surely that we would have been informed of this in advance of them coming. Surely they would have actually looked at the county to see where the housing waiting list, was there, was there houses, was there schools, was there A, B and C? No, we were just told to get 24 families and they're coming in this state. Now what's happening in the county, and this is at a very small level, what's happening then is the people that are, that are in Offaly, I know they're from Wexford, are 10, 15 years on the housing waiting list, living in rented accommodation, poor accommodation, they will stay in them accommodations and, and the, the asylum seekers coming in, the refugees, will be given new houses, straight off. Will be given every opportunity for education, will not have to wait for an occupational terrorist, will not have to wait for anything that the terrorist tombo here, and straight away they will just go straight to the top of the line. Now, I have no difficulty if you're coming in. Now, first thing is that there's houses to be looked at, the Irish will be looked after first, and the rented accommodation at the Irish are at the moment, to me, I would see that the asylum seekers or refugees don't know what's coming into our country. Uh, surely, uh, if you're in the, in the morning, and we're all, like, and I always use this example, if you go to Dublin or you go down to Ennis Garden and you see a homeless person, that's enough you will feel sorry for them. You won't bring them home to your wife and kids and say, and I get the spare room ready. Because you don't know. But, you, but yet, you feel sorry for that person that's homeless. But you wouldn't let them into your family home because you don't know what you're letting in. That's the way we're up in our, our operating our country at the moment. And the minute you say that you want to control that and vet that, you're racist. Now what's happening is, because the EU put so much pressure on the government, what they're doing is to create the direct provision scenario. And what they're doing is, instead of going through in 2015 where it was an 11-week process that you either qualify or don't qualify, if you don't qualify, you're put back on a plane and you're sent back. What we have now is they're prolonging that system and it's three, four, five years, ten years, has cost millions for people in direct provisions. Now I feel sorry for the people in direct provisions because we should be giving them the opportunity, and this comes to your second point, in terms of if we're controlling the coming in, we have labour shortages. If we have labour shortages, we should be able to select who we want to come into the country that's going to contribute to the exchequer, but more importantly, they can contribute for themselves and for their family, and they can create a life. And that's the situation we have at the moment. And it's just been thrown in and it's going to get worse and worse and worse, folks. Uh, and, and what's going to happen then is, God forbid, if, if in 10 or 15 years' time, uh, and, and this is what, what kills me more than anything else. We seem to be, as, as in this country in Ireland, given way on everything that means something to us. Every value that we ever had is being taken away. And we've seen that time and time again. And we're only 20 years away from someone standing up and saying, there shouldn't be a church up there, there shouldn't be this, or we should have that because we had in our own country. And you have groups of people in rooms like this lobbying to get something in this country that is in their own country, but is not of our culture. And that's what's happening. Now you might say to yourself, well, listen, John, you're being extreme. But look what's happening time and time again. Now, I know I'm, I'm long-winded about what I'm saying, but the minute we knew we're the only political party, and they're trying to nail us every time. They're trying to say, on, uh, I was on television, uh, with Matt Cooper and, and I, Yates, I was on, on radio, and they're trying to say, you're racist. I'm saying, we're not racist. We just want to control what's going on in this country. And I think that's a very, very fair point. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm.